Hey guys, another video for our how to do stuff in Japan playlist. If you spend any time in Japan, obviously at some stage you're going to be wanting to use the post office to send something somewhere. And as with just about every other country in the world, if you're going to send some sort of item, usually you have to complete a declaration to say what's what the item is or what the items are. And a couple of reasons, usually there's a tax reason. They're sort of concerned if you're selling out, sending alcohol or tobacco or something like that, there might be some tax payable. The other thing is, of course, safety, because most parcels are going to end up on an aeroplane or something at some stage, or even if they don't, they want to make sure that whatever's in the parcel is safe. So that's fairly normal. We're used to that, aren't we? So obviously, we have family outside Japan as well as inside Japan. So forever, we've been sending parcels internationally for people's birthdays and Christmas and Mother's Day and Father's Day and all sorts of things so we're forever sending parcels around the world and then because of the Japan channel of course we've got a monthly giveaway where we send sell, send out at least two or three things or four things or five things every month so over the years we've spent a lot of time in the post office so we've sort of got it a, a little bit sorted out we've got the, the declarations and the documents that the courier company use we have lots of copies of those at home so that we can complete all the documentation correctly before we even go to the post office so when we walk into the post office we can, we're all ready to go Just pop past this scooter guys here we go ah! so so we've sort of got it pretty well sorted out and we understand that they're extremely pedantic like most bureaucracies in Japan they're extremely pedantic and we understand what they're pedantic about and, and what they expect and what they want and how they carry on so we do our preparation as best we can and then we we patient we 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 make sure our patient level is high before we walk into the post office right and some of you who've lived in Japan who live in Japan will, will recognize this and if, if not we highly recommend this strategy when you're going to go into a situation here that you know is going to be potentially stressful or frustrating that you you be aware of it when you walk in the door so you can get your patience level up as high as possible and expect that it's going to take some time and some faffing around you know uh, it's about all you can do and that's one of the reasons we make this sort of how-to video as well is warning people of what it's like so they're not surprised because quite often when these things happen it catches you unaware and that makes it even more stressful so so we're very familiar with how they work uh, we walked in there today into the post office with the giveaway items that we had we showed you uh, recently a video a giveaway for September and we had a whole bunch of stuff you guys saw it stickers stickers little signs candy uh, balloon uh, a little uh, propeller wooden propeller thing that you spin and it flies in the air and a bunch of things like that so pretty much the same as we had last month so last month we'd gone in there with the same document completed exactly the same way and most of the time at this post office we deal with the same lady 90% of the time it's the same lady and we've been dealing with her for years so we're used to them they're used to us it's it's usually a little bit frustrating but not too bad usually they ask a lot of questions they can't read English of course and all our papers in in English because we're sending stuff internationally no point in writing it all in Japanese when it arrives in Norway or Australia or America no one's gonna be able to read it so we write it in English and we put there you know candy and toys and balloons and and whatever else we've got in the thing stickers so you know, we did it exactly, basically the same stuff, didn't we, in August? The same, same giveaway stuff. So we turned up today, same thing. So we've got a book to go to the guy in, in the US, and we've got um, these two parcels, one to go to someone in Australia and one to go to somewhere in, in Norway. So we walked in, all patient patient and ready to be frustrated. No problem, here we go. So so I put it all down, okay, this is going to Australia, this book's going to Australia, and, and these two parcels, this one's going to Norway, and this way this one's going this one this one's going to Norway this one's going to Australia and this this skinny book books are easy this one's going to the US so that they just basically put a stamp on that and threw it in a in a container that was over and then these two two parcels now parcel the A4 or smaller than A4 envelopes and about that thick there wasn't a lot of stuff those of you who saw the giveaway you know there wasn't a lot of bulk to it that we're careful to keep it sort of light so 
So okay, 2,000 yen each, that was sort of interesting. There's about $25 to, to send those things. And it's just a sort of an envelope about this size. And then like she always does, she said, she said, what's this? And I said, that's it. And cause I got to translate, right? Cause it's all in Japanese. We're talking Japanese, of course, but the document's in English. So what's that? And I said, it's, um, it's uh, stickers and that's uh, a little sign and that's a toy. And then you, we always write toy. We send toys to people all the time. And we always write toy. And, and quite often when they get to the end of the document, they'll say to us, is there anything dangerous in there? You know, and, and at the bottom of the document, it says there is nothing dangerous. And it says it in Japanese and English. There's nothing dangerous in this article, in this item. And you have to cross the box to agree to it and you sign it. Like you do in every other country, right? And, and usually what happens at post offices around the world and at the airport when you're checking in, they ask you if there's anything dangerous, you say there's nothing dangerous, you sign the document, end of story, right? And that's the end of it, isn't it? But no, not in Japan, you sign the document to say there's nothing dangerous and then they ask you, what's this, what's this, what's this? And you've got to tell them what it is in Japanese, that's fair enough. And then they say, is there anything dangerous? And so when she first started this faffing thing, she, I said to her, in Japanese, of course, it's all Japanese. I said to her, there's nothing dangerous. No, it's okay, there's nothing dangerous. And then she said, and then she said, what's this? What's this, what's this, and what's the toy? And I said, I said, it's just a little toy, nothing dangerous. She said, is there a battery? I said, no, nothing dangerous. Nothing dangerous, no battery, no battery, nothing dangerous. And then she said, oh, can you write no battery? Right, now they've never asked us to do that before. Normally we just write toy, and mocha, mocha, it's okay, it's a toy. So we write toy, and that's the end of it. And is there a battery in it? No, that's the end of it. Please write no battery next to it. Okay, so no battery toy. And then so I grabbed the other, the other parcel and wrote on that, no battery toy. And which we've never had to do before, but that's okay. And then I said to her, should I write no gasoline and no bomb and no, I mean, to list the things that aren't in there is, is rather an odd approach, right? And of course she didn't get that, but I kept saying to her, no, there's nothing dangerous, there's nothing dangerous, nothing dangerous. And I must have said to her, in the course of this, quite calmly, six or seven times, there's nothing dangerous, there's nothing dangerous. And then I said to her, no, I signed the bottom line, there's nothing dangerous. And she said, oh, you know, is there anything? And she kept going, more than usual, you know? And I said to her, look, because I've been going there for years, I said to her, look, I'm a pilot. And she went, oh, sugoi, you know, ex excellent, excellent. I said, no, 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 that's not why I'm telling you that, no. I said, I'm a, I'm a pilot, I've got, I'm a commercial pilot, and that means that I have a certificate uh, to deal with dangerous goods. So for a commercial pilot, to be a commercial pilot, you have to have a dangerous goods certificate. So you have to know what dangerous goods are and what aren't, and what's safe to travel with and what isn't, and what, what things, if you put together, become, unda uh, become dangerous. And, you know, we do a, quite a lot of study to get that certification, dangerous goods certification, right? So I explained that to her just really quickly. I said to her, so, I understand dangerous goods, because I was hoping that, because we go in there every, you know, every month at least, and sometimes twice a month. And every time we go through this sort of faffing, you know, and I was hoping that by explaining this to her, that she would understand that I do understand what's meant by dangerous goods, you know? And of course, the same as every other post office in the world and every other airport, there's a list on the wall there of what's dangerous and have you got any of these items in the parcel? No, I haven't. And it just went on and on, on and on. And, uh, and at one stage, I was really trying hard to be patient because you've got to be patient in these situations. In some countries, if you give the staff a telling off, it might make them change their attitude, but in Japan, it doesn't work. You know, as we've said a million times before, you've just got to stay patient. So I was trying to stay patient and I kept saying, no, no, no nothing dangerous, no, nothing dangerous, no. No, it's just, just a small, small toy. There's nothing dangerous in it. And, and then at one stage, she asked another question. I said, look, there's nothing dangerous. And it was a little bit too loud, a little bit too loud and a little bit too assertive, right? But it was sort of like the, 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 the uh, patience level was getting low and it was getting a bit frustrating. So as soon as I said it, I regretted it, you know. Look, there's nothing, there's nothing dangerous in there, you know. And that was about the seventh or eighth time I was, I'd said it. And I said, look, I signed, I signed here, look, there's nothing dangerous. I signed it, okay, where it says a declaration that says there's nothing dangerous. And... Um, 
So this would this had gone on and on, you know, which is just incredible. It, it, it felt, and it, often this is the case in Japan, you often feel like like it's the first time you've been through it, even though you've been through it a hundred times before. And you often feel like the staff are doing something for the first time, even though they've done it a thousand times before. That's often the case. You get the same feeling at banks, you get the same feeling in all sorts of companies, the way the staff behave sometimes, you know, the, the uh, city hall. You, you often get the feeling that the staff are behaving like they've never done it before. It's like, well, don't you know, haven't you done this before? So I went on and on. So anyway, <laughs> there's nothing dangerous in there. It's okay, I signed it, you know. And then I regretted it straight away. And then while she processed the, the parcels and stamped and I paid the money and everything, I was going out of my way then to be really relaxed and quiet and smile and be really nice so that reassured her that, look, it's all okay. Because, you know, as we've said a million times before, you don't want to upset the, the harmony here. So got it all done. Uh, thank you very much. Got my change, got the paperwork, started to walk out the door and she went, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. And she called me back and she said, there's, there's two more copies here. And she gave me two more copies because you've always got to have lots of paper when you do something in Japan. So there's another two copies of the documents. Okay, now I've got two copies of everything and you know, my receipt and everything. Okay, thank you very much. And I'm smiling at her and she's smiling back. And it's like, okay, okay. And I got back in the car and I was driving home. And as you often do here in Japan, if you're, if you're a bit conscious of your behavior, Quite often after things like that, you go away going, oh God, man, you know, this place drives me mad. But at the same time, it's good to have a bit of a self analysis of how you dealt with it and like, how was I with that, you know? And, and I, I drove away thinking, oh geez, I snapped at her a bit there at the end, you know? And then I was thinking, yeah, but I, I'd given her the same answer seven times, you know? And I'd already explained, I thought explaining that pilot thing would help and it, it just, just sort of, the, the communication here, you feel like they just no, no one's listening or they just don't have the ability. The, the communication thing here is different. They get stuck. This often happens. They get stuck in a mindset and they're not really, they don't really know what to do and they're not listening, which is bizarre when it's something that they do all the time. And I mean, it's the same declaration and the same parcel pretty much that we'd sent a month before. So I'm driving away thinking all this and as is often the case, going, oh, Jesus. All right, next time we go to the post office, I've got to be even more patient because obviously that wasn't patient enough if I was getting grumpy there. And I've got to be more patient and expect that that's what it's going to be like next time as well. And, and so, okay, yep. So, so drove, drove home and got back, got on the computer, straight onto YouTube as always to, to uh, answer comments and check messages and things. And within a couple of minutes, the phone rang. Who do you think it would be? <laughs> So I pick up the phone and she said it's, you know, Nakamura here, Nakamura from from the post office. And I said hello, and because I just knew it. This has happened to me before, okay? I've actually had phone calls from the post office before, so I know. So it was like, and it, and, and it, like, you know, I'd, I'd only just recovered from that, the actual face-to-face -face ordeal, right? So, yes, yes, what can I do for you? And she said, is it okay? Can I talk to you now? Right? Is it a good time to talk, basically? And again, all this is in Japanese, right? So is it a good time to talk? Yes, yes. And she said to me, look, I need to ask you about that toy. What is it? And I said to her, look, I told you, it's not dangerous. It's a, it's a piece of wood. It's a propeller. And uh, it's that thing we showed you, that spinning thing. And I said, it's made of wood. It's a piece of wood. It's a small piece of wood. That's all it is. There's nothing else. There's no plastic. There's no metal. There's no battery. There's nothing else. It's a small. It's a small toy made of wood. That's all it is. And oh, I need to check and I need to make sure that it's not anything dangerous. And I said, it's not dangerous. And here we are again, back to where we were when I was standing in the post office. And I'm saying to her, it's not dangerous. It's a piece of wood. There's nothing else. It's made of wood. There's that propeller thing, right? Just carved wood. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing. There's nothing else. It's just a piece of wood. Oh, I have to check and make sure. It's not, can, 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 can you put on there, on there what sort of toy it is? What sort of toy? What sort of toy? Imagine standing in Toys R Us and looking around Toys R Us or any other toy shop in the world and having to describe any toy that's in there. And she said, can you say it's a doll? You know, if you're gonna fill that document, she's talking about the next time I go in there. Can you, you gotta say it's a doll or you gotta say it's whatever it is. 
And because the other thing was a balloon, so I said it was a balloon, but it's like, in English, what is it? It's a wooden propeller. And I said to her in Japanese, if I'd said, and then I said in English, wooden propeller, would you know what I meant? She said, no. <laughs> so, so I said, it's a toy, it's a wooden toy made of wood. Oh, we have to check, it's not dangerous. I said, I told you it's not dangerous. And I said, look, I'm a pilot. Like I told you in the, when I was in the post office, I'm a pilot. And she said, same thing she said in the post office, sugoi, like excellent. And I said, no, no, I'm not telling you that to impress you. I said to her, I'm telling you that because I'm making the point that I've been trained in dangerous goods. I have a, a license, I call it a minkia show, I call it a license to try and get across to her what it, what it actually is. I, I have a license to... To, to carry dangerous goods in an aircraft. So I understand about dangerous goods. I will never put anything dangerous in a parcel I'm sending from the post office, you know? And I said, it's, it's a toy, it's a wooden toy, you know, it's a wooden toy. And we just went around in the big circle again. And she said, because we have to check it's not fireworks. <laughs> right? It was just bizarre. It was just biz absolutely bizarre. Absolutely bizarre. And any other country in the world, you'd be amazed. But in Japan, it's not amazing. I've actually had the same experience before. I had another one once before where we were sending something else, and then we can't remember what it was. And I had exactly the same thing. They hassled me while I was in there, and then they said it was okay, and then half an hour later, they called me on the phone to ask me about it. So I've been through this before. I've been through this before with them. And, and if, you say, if you tell any Japanese person about this, their response will be, oh, they have to do that because they have to be careful. And that's exactly, and that's exactly the problem. That's why these things never improve. Is because everybody just accepts this sort of bullshit. Because in other countries, this sort of behavior, customers wouldn't accept it, would they? Customers would be complaining all over the place about this sort of nonsense. And saying, I completed the declaration, that's the end of the story. You know, I, I, I wrote down what was in the parcel. I completed the de dangerous goods e declaration. That's the end of the story. A 30 minute conversation about it is not necessary. You know, it's a waste of my time. And calling me to talk about it is a waste of my time. Um, but in Japan, that's considered being thorough. And we've talked about this before. We told you, you know, to get a, a loan from the bank, took 14 visits to the bank. You know, and they keep saying, can you come back again next week and bring another document? Can you come back again next week and bring another document? And in, in another country, customers would never go there again. I'm not going to the bank 14 times for a home loan. Whereas in Japan, it's just considered they're being thorough. And that's what Japanese people will tell you. If you, if you tell them, oh, you know, what, if, I, if a Japanese person watches this video, that's what they'll say. They'll say, they'll say, oh, they're being thorough. They have to be careful that it's not something dangerous. That's what they'll say. And of course, you understand that, I understand that, you know, we understand that because everywhere in the world there's dangerous goods rules when it comes to the post office, but only in Japan would you have this sort of experience, right? Where they'd, where they'd question you for 15, 20 minutes in the post office and then call you, call you <laughs> after you leave the post office, call you on the phone and talk to you about it for another 15 minutes, like the first conversation never happened. And I mean, the reason for this, there's a, there's a bunch of reasons. One is this pedantic, pedantic thing with, you know, being thorough to, to the point of insanity. You know, with a lot of this stuff, it's just insane. And, and just, you know, you get, you get a bunch of foreigners that live in Japan together talking about topics like this, and everyone's got lots of examples of this sort of insanity. You know, it just drives you insane. There's the lack of logic and the lack of, lack of reason and the common sense and and so that's one of the problems is that it's seen as being careful and being uh, thorough. So everyone else in Japan, the other customers would see her as being very thorough and being very careful. And that's a good thing, right? And, you know, I mean, we can see it's over the top and not necessary, but no, they'll see that as being thorough and being careful. Um, the other thing is that the communication thing. People talk here with, it, with no communication at all. We've given you examples of that before. You know, we went to a place the other day and the person I was with had a half hour conversation with the staff to get the information about some curtains. And then we got back in the car and we're heading home and I said, did you find out if it was one or two? Is it two in the set or one in the set? No, oh, no, I didn't, no, I didn't, didn't know about that. Which was the, actually the, the main thing that was gonna be discussed. And that happens a lot here. 
the Yoku Okada and I, I don't really know thing. And, and you'll have conversations here, big long conversations here, and at the end of it, nothing. And that was basically what had happened in the post office. We'd have this big long on and on and on, backwards and forwards between us. And at the end of it, it's like, okay, well, that's all done, and let's pay the money, and it's all done, and that's all over. And then half an hour later, you get a phone call, and it's like that first conversation never happened. Everything that we said to each other in the post office just didn't happen, and we're saying it all again. And it's just it's just that robotic, we've talked about the robotic thing before, the robotic and the hive, and everybody's just sort of doing their thing. And there's no common sense, there's no sort of, there's no sort of thinking outside the box, or just no good communication and I mean this sort of thing is just it's just normal and that's what Japanese people will tell you you talk to Japanese people about this and they'll say oh she's just being thorough because she has to be careful because it's dangerous things and and it's and it's normal they say oh futsu futsu it's normal it's normal you know and because Japanese people have got so much patience if you watch if you watch Japanese people dealing with things like this they are so patient usually they just quietly listen and oh and have these long-winded conversations that don't seem to go anywhere. You know, just don't seem to go anywhere. If you if you st just stand beside them or sit beside them and listen, and just listen, then these long-winded conversations like that just don't seem to go anywhere. And everybody's sucking through their teeth and tilting their heads. And, you know, in hindsight, in that case, it probably would have been easier just to open up the parcel and take everything out. So look at it. Look at it, you know. But, but you sort of... It's so insane that you just keep thinking it's going to stop in a minute, you know. You, th you keep thinking it's resolved. And as you can imagine, having paid the money and left everything there, you know, the parcel and the documents and walked out the door, it would be reasonable to assume that it was all over, wouldn't it? You know? <laughs> Who would expect that, you know, 30 minutes later you'd start again? So... So this is just a heads up, guys. If you're going to be dealing with the post office or the bank or the city hall or big companies or utility companies like gas or electricity or um, tax office, tax office. We could do long stories on the tax office. But if you're going to be dealing with any of these people in Japan, expect this sort of thing because it's really common. And all you, gotta, you just got to be patient. If you lose your patience, it'll just make it worse. Anyway, there it was. Going postal in Japan. More videos coming soon.